Um, I'm really glad to be here to share stories that I've learned um, through developing and bringing to market the Thinfolio custom wallet. So the talk is all about profit and automation, but really the underpinning is about bringing unlimited creative freedom to the marketplace. We've heard a lot about that this morning at the conference. The, the new technologies and the new ways of creating are really dramatic. So this, this piece of artwork was created by a modern artist by the name of David Hockney using an iPad tablet computer and an app called Brushes. And this was printed and is traveling the world as one of the preeminent artists of our time. So wait a minute, I'm actually a software guy. What am I doing speaking at a textile conference all of a sudden? It's because together we need to deliver on the promise of unlimited creative freedom to our customers. So a over, quick overview of my talk. We're going to talk about some key changes in the digital printing industry, and this has been fairly, fairly well covered this morning. We're going to go through a case study with developing the Thinfolio custom wallet, and then we're going to talk about some of the lessons that I learned that hopefully you can take back to your own businesses and your own products. So one of the big changes that I've seen is in internet scale creativity and in, and in creation of images. Flickr over here, about 60 million photos are uploaded to Flickr every month. Instagram, 60 million photos are uploaded every single day. So the pace of creation, not just of photographs, but of designs and many other things, it's only accelerating. And we're perfectly positioned to take advantage of that. There's also a number of different cloud platforms that are making things easier and easier to innovate online. Things like Amazon Web Services, things like the Adobe Creative Cloud. You can now run Photoshop online, entirely online. And other simple things like Dropbox, a wonderful service that allows you to very easily share files with your designer, with your creative team, with anybody that needs to be a stakeholder in your process. And designers themselves are collaborating in these online communities like never before. There's a site, this is a, a screenshot of Dribbble, and on the right side of your screen, you see all the discussion about the design that this person has done. There's 70 plus comments about this particular design. Really incredible. Behance was actually recently purchased by Adobe, very similar online community, where people are posting their designs, getting feedback, and these people are creating together in entirely new ways that we're only now beginning to understand. So on the hardware side, we covered this pretty well this morning, but you can get a 12-meter a wide printer, or you can make it yourself. You can buy readily available 3-meter wide printers from, from Durst and others. It's just incredible. There's vast hardware innovation, and it's only, it's only accelerating. Down here is a small little desktop flatbed printer. And these are becoming much more accessible. I mean, virtually anybody can run out and buy one of these desktop printers and, and bring them back into their own manufacturing facility. But it's really up to us to bridge the gap between these hardware innovations and our customers. That's where we come into the mix, you and I. So looking at the print hardware market is a great place to be right now. These industrial machines, like I said, are accessible. We want to go along for this ride. We want to be part of this. This is actually Mimaki's um, stock chart over the last two years. So they're providing a lot of entry level machines into industrial digital printing for both textile and UV, many different processes. And they're doing quite well with it. The other thing is that these printers are now being installed in virtually every manufacturing environment in the world. Last two years, five years, eight years, people are bringing these machines in. And finally, they're fast enough, they're big enough, and they're cost effective enough to run alongside some of the biggest manufacturers in the world. So now let's look at our product, which is the Thinfolio wallet. So it's actually a physical wallet. It's not a digital wallet. It is, it is a physically uh, produced wallet. It's printed on Tyvek, which is a very thin, very strong synthetic paper. So we print it. Um, in our studio in California, we cut it, we sew it, and we ship them around the world. Everything is produced in-house. 
all within just a few meters. All the machines are, are spaced very, very close together. And everything is made to order. Every single piece is made because of an order. We do big runs, but at the entire business, um, like Ron was saying, saying this morning, the entire business model is focused on creating one item. So we started off pretty basic. So here's me at my home sewing machine, um, sweating up a storm, sewing some wallets back in, the, back in the early days. And then I finally discovered, I discovered you. I discovered these industrial digital printers. And it was just amazing, because finally I actually had a viable product that was going to be durable enough. I could digitally pr print and produce them on demand. It's very, very excited. But I didn't know all the details, so at the very beginning, we had to do everything by hand. This actually is my wife, and I don't know if you can see, but this is our two-week-old daughter at the time. She's now a year and a half, but you know, we got a big order, and here we are doing everything by hand ourselves, cutting the thread, doing all the folding, the creasing, the printing. Everything is entirely by hand. But it was very important for us to do this, to learn, well, what takes all the time? Where do we continually make all the errors? It was very important for us to go through this process, doing every last little detail by hand, in order for us to fully understand it later on. And we quickly found that the blank canvas that we had provided, our material starts off completely white, very, very bright white. But we're providing a blank canvas to designers and individuals to showcase their photos, but also their incredible designs. And we were stunned by the things that people came up with. These are some, some corporate orders interlaced with a professional photographer from the cycling industry who created these gorgeous panoramas of, of bicycle racing. And we started to see the same sorts of things come up again and again, and we realized we have to support this activity. We have to support the creative freedom of the people that are ultimately buying our products. So here's a brief snapshot of our workflow. We need to acquire the images from the consumer. Turns out, not necessarily the easiest process. We need to render those images into a form that the consumer is going to understand what they're going to get in the mail. We also need to render something that we can use to actually produce on the printer and then cut and sew. Then we have to make the product. We add a barcode. We print the items. We assemble it. And then we need to figure out where are we going to ship it. So we need to manage the order. We need to keep track of our inventory of raw materials. We need to pick and pack, and we need to ultimately ship it out the door. And we also had to figure out, well, what happens when we get a, a large number of orders? And down at the bottom, you can see in the yellow, there's, these are all the things that can go wrong. You simply can't acquire a vast array of images from a lot of consumers without some automation. You can't ship the right wallet to the right person unless you know exactly which one is which. Run into lots of problems. So this is a listing of basically all the activities and all the tools that we were using initially. So we're tracking things in a spreadsheet. We're using Trello to track our production management. For each job, we just created a folder. And all the images that we got from the consumer went there. Um, we were generating uh, barcodes with a free online barcode generator, doing all sorts of different things. But if you look at the, the file transfer tools that we're using, Share file, Dropbox, you send it, Google Drive, email. I mean, we're trying to get images any way we possibly can. Same thing with payments. I mean, we're trying to take money any way we possibly can. PayPal, check, cash, um, using a square uh, payment reader. Very, very challenging to keep track of these details. And check out our workflow, USB keys. So we create the image, and we walk it over to the printer and actually print these things out. So this is what it actually looks like. Here I am sitting at my desk, trying to manage all these orders. You can see a um, cup of coffee here. Here's a, a bunch of stamps, where I actually have to physically put a stamp on each, on each item. Very, very challenging. Here's me sewing just a, a number of different wallets, um, just, just trying to take care of a number of different jobs early on. By April 2014, we introduced our online design tool. And you'll see a screenshot of this in a moment, but you can see what it's actually replaced. It's replaced job management, tracking. We're adding a barcode in an automated fashion, handles all the file transfer. The payments now happen in a pretty standard e-commerce fashion. 
Um, but we're still using things like USB keys. We're still walking around from one computer to another. Pretty, uh, pretty challenging environment. So this is what it looks like um, using some of the graphics uh, borrowed from our, our, our friends at FESPA. You actually see a few important details. You actually see where the stitches are going to be. So we're setting that expectation. We're rendering the product to the user in a way that they're going to understand. So if, if her face was a little bit further over, you know, you want to make sure there's not a line of stitches across somebody's face. So you're setting that expectation with the consumer. It's been very, very important to do things like that. And we've added lots of tools to get their images. Down here, we take their payment. So we're automating all these different steps in one fell swoop it, with our designer. And all of a sudden, we got a big torrent of individual orders. And we were able to handle that only because we had this, this design tool. With all these individual orders, we would, we would have just been absolutely demolished with the workload. And my background is in supply chain management software development. And we were actually able to bring our own supply chain management system into our own business, which was, which was really wonderful. So now we're trying to shave 10 seconds, trying to sit, shave 15 seconds off of the production process. But you can see we're tracking everything in our supply chain system. Production management is handled there. Everything's very well organized now. And we're doing fun things like we're taking pictures of the individual products as they're manufactured, and we're sharing those pictures with the individual, com with, with the individual consumer. So they're pretty excited to see their wallet being sewn on the sewing machine. And we could only do things like that because we have all this automation, because so much time has been freed up. So here's a little snapshot of what our production management system looks like have all our orders, have all the money, and the number of items, and what all the status is. And we have a quick link to the image files and anything else we need to get. It's all handled right here in the system. So now the jobs go onto our flatbed printer. We print them all out. They're all nested. And looking at this, I don't really care what the item is. I know I need to cut it, sew it, and ship it, just like every other piece. So it almost doesn't matter what the design is from our perspective at this point. And so how close are we going to be in another couple months? We're actually, I think, going to have virtually everything to the level where we can actually relax a little bit and just, and just produce wallets. So everything has been produced um, from a software perspective and from a lean uh, production process where we're actually getting pretty close to, to what we consider to be our ideal. So if you look back to November 13, it, it kind of looks even worse than it did a year ago because there's all these different tools and it's up to me to put all of these different pieces together by, by hand. It was, it was virtually impossible. Um, it's worth mentioning that because of all of the tools we've created, there's some creative business models that emerge. It's not just with the design freedom, it's actually with the business models. There's a chain of about 30 shops that came to us and said, hey, we want to buy about, we want to place about 50 to 150 orders per year, but we're only going to place an order at one time for five to 10 pieces, all different designs. And we were able to say, well, that's fine. We'll give you the great you know, distributor level pricing, but you're going to have to use all the workflow tools that we've built. You're going to have to submit these things so your production gets interleaved with everyone else's production, and this is actually no problem. So this was very exciting for me to, to realize, wow, people are using the tools we've built in a, in, a, in a very new way. And so just quick summary of the results. Before we had the designer, we're doing everything manually, um, designing things in Illustrator, exporting as PDF, walking to the RIP computer. That took about two minutes to carry the uh, USB key over there. Um, very, very time consuming. It took about 52 minutes just to deal with the order. And in the end, we got it down to two minutes because we don't have to do all that work that was just happening over and over and over again. We've just automated that process. And printing, cutting, sewing, and packing takes about three and a half to four minutes um, per item if we're operating uh, at, a, at, a, at a larger volume. So do we really want to do this as an industry? Do we want to focus on a minimum order quantity of one piece? Well, it's inevitable because our customers are demanding it. There's, there's really no way to avoid it. But the good news is, and this is a paper from McKinsey that I'd encourage um, everyone to take, take a look at, 
we can charge higher prices for unique products that you, can't, you simply can't get anywhere else. Customers are delighted. They absolutely love us. But we need to be very mindful of the risk and the cost involved with these, these sorts of endeavors. So I'll wrap up with some lessons learned um, along the process. And there were so many hard lessons that I had learned along the way that it was very challenging to distill it to just three. But these, these are the things that I hope will be um, most helpful to, to all of you. So the, the first one is think in the sense of what jobs need to be done. What job does my customer do, and what job do we do? So we need to know ourselves, we need to know our process, and we need to make sure that our customers are going to be successful. And there's, from lean manufacturing, there's three different types of work. There's work that adds value to your business. There's work that doesn't necessarily add value, but you have to do, it's necessary. And then there's waste. And so we're trying to go from a, a pie chart like this to one where we're adding tremendous value to the, to the business. And so here's the steps we must do. So here's detailed time and cost um, of each step. And it's important to note, these are the steps that we do behind the scenes once this, this happy customer up here submits his or her design online. But then they, we go through the process of creating a PDF and syncing it to the RIP computer and doing the printing and the cutting and sewing and the finished product and shipping it out. But there's a whole nother chart like this, which is what the customer's job is, what the customers are doing, picking out images, placing them in a certain way. So there's a lot of different things. But by the end of it, from the time people submit an order until it ships out the door is five and a half minutes today. And we only did this by getting a very detailed time and cost for every single step. So we're literally taking lap times of what all the different sewing operations take. So you just take times and keep track of every single step. Then you can create really complicated spreadsheets like this to track every single step, the cost, the time, the labor, all of the raw materials, everything goes into this spreadsheet so that we finally know what we're actually doing and where our costs are. So there's so many different things to do. How on earth are we going to achieve it? Well, it's only by assembling the right team. And we've worked with a number of different people, both on our team, in-house, as well as consultants and people from the vendors, to learn about manufacturing, color management, the digital capabilities, the digital limitations, finance, user experience, all these different things. These are all very important things that you may have on your team already or you may need to get and bring them in. But the important thing to note is that you want to get the most value out of your team. So eliminate the repetitive work, eliminate the waste, and all of a sudden you can really tap into to the value creation of members of your team. So this is another concept which sometimes can be a little bit controversial, but you need to make your customers awesome. And that doesn't mean get awesome customers that pay you lots of money. This is, this is actually something quite different. It's how do we make our customers successful so that they can generate really amazing products that they're going to love. So this is um, a designer who created this thing called the Pattern Library. We talk about repeating patterns. This is a free resource, actually, with some really tremendous um, patterns online. Really, really wonderful website called the Pattern Library. And then all of a sudden, here's an oh my god moment where we've created something using one of these patterns and he's talking about it on social media. He's very, very excited because we've realized his inspiration. We've created something that exceeded his expectations. We've made him awesome. And this is how we do it with a number of different tools. We have the online designer, but we also create downloadable templates. We have guidelines. We focus on the details, we provide lots of samples. We're really trying to support the customer in their creative process. It is, has not been easy, but when we get feedback and we get questions, we try to, try to support that as best we can. And the third and, and final point that I'll make is automate in flexible phases. And this was something that we really, really struggled with. We need to have realistic planning we're developing software, we're dealing with machinery that is brand new, we're using technologies that we haven't used before, 
we're doing production that we haven't necessarily done before either. And we really need to understand um, what are the most time consuming tasks? What are the things that we can bundle together? Like we solved a lot of problems in one shot with the designer. What are the sorts of opportunities that we can, uh, that we can create and, and address some of these issues? Markets change, products change. So we need to be ready for that change as well. And it's been one step at a time for us. And a few times we've thought, oh, if this happens, then we'll need to build something like this, or we'll need to buy this type of machine. But it's been very care we've been very careful only to automate the bottlenecks. We don't try to pre-optimize. We don't try to solve a problem that maybe we'll have in six months. We're trying to solve the problems that we have today. The other thing that's very important is always have a bailout, always have a backup plan so that if things go wrong with your implementation or one of your software systems doesn't end up working, you have a backup plan. You need to still be able to do it manually. And the other thing that is very difficult for me personally is you can't rush. Things, you always want things to go faster and be a little bit more aggressive with your timeline, but with a lot of these different things, these new technologies, you, you really, really can't rush. And a note about being flexible by design, there's a company in San Francisco that wants to, wanted to launch a new product and we we're actually able to help them out. So they're doing a dye sublimation product, um, which is a tote bag, and we we're in the position, we we're actually able to help them with some of the same sorts of processes and struggles that they were going through. And that was really, really exciting and rewarding to, to me to be able to help another manufacturer go through a very similar process without so many speed bumps and without so much complexity. Other things like adding laser cutters, they require very specialized registration marks. There's a number of different things that are in your future that you need to be able to handle when those things come up. So don't create very, very rigid systems. You need to create a system that is very flexible so you can integrate these new technology, add new printers, add new types of ink. So in review, Determine every step in your process. This is something that's been very, very important to us. Support that creativity of your customers. And I'm sure you've seen incredibly surprising things and it's only gonna get more amazing. And be prepared for change and be realistic. So I hope that this presentation gets you started down the path of creating more profits with your one-off and short run digital printed um, products and personally, I'd love to hear from you. I love talking with my new FESPA family about these sorts of things. Um, so come see me afterwards. Thank you guys very much.